I'd like to welcome you back to episode two of the Real Work Podcast with myself, Ed Loss. Today's special guest is Jardy Tension. He's been training in martial arts for over three decades and he holds several black belts in different styles of karate. He's got a black belt in Taekwondo and a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Jardy's an extremely accomplished fighter, but more importantly, he's one of the best instructors on the entire planet. So let's move over to Jardy and get in with the questions. What we're doing today is we're discussing the problems within the martial arts industry. So the martial arts industry is full of people which are characters, they've got their own characters, they've got their own morals, they've got their own ethics. But martial arts is meant to come with character development, which means we need to develop ourselves morally, ethically. That doesn't mean that we are in a church. It doesn't mean that we are saying, or I'm saying, that we don't make mistakes. Mistakes are allowed to be made. It's what you do about them afterwards that shows who you are as a person and how you've developed through, through resilience and through your life. So the first question I'm going to give across to, to Jardy for, for, the, for his answer is uh, on, on the other side of the pond in America, is the martial arts industry in a bit of a mess in the same way it is in England? And then we'll discuss the actual mess. But so what's, what does the martial arts industry look like in America at the moment? Oh, uh, this is, whew, we'll be here all night. Uh, I think that um, one of the major issues in, 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 the, in well, at least in the US, is that um, there are absolutely more symbols than substance, right? We have gotten away from quality martial arts. We have gotten away from um, uh, creating a good quality martial artist. It has become, like, I, I, I'm, I truly believe that school owners should be able to make a living um, doing this. But I think that at this stage, it's terrible, man. It's like, imagine, and I say this all the time, imagine walking into a restaurant and you fix the plates, you fix the silverware, the lighting, the ambiance, the, the chairs, the tables, and the last thing that you address is the food, right? Yeah. The, the food is absolutely terrible, but you say, if I make all these shiny things and I make the table nice and the valet nice and make everyone friendly, you know, that's what the martial arts, the, 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 the meat of the, of, the, of the martial arts is absolutely terrible. In my opinion, it, yeah. it, it is, you got six year old, seven year old black belts, you know, you got guys that, um, if you went swimming for, if you practice swimming for a year, it would look like it. If you practice boxing for a year, it would look like it. If yeah. you practice track for a year, it would look like it. You could practice martial arts in America for four years and it won't even look like, you, you look like it's day one. Yeah. And it's just terrible. I think it's, it's, a, it's an atrocity, and I think it's uh, the state of martial arts is embarrassing in America, at least in my opinion. Yeah, and it, so it sounds like it's the same in England as well. We've got, there's terms that people throw around like Mac dojos or belt okay. factories, mm -hmm. these type of things. So part of the problem that we've noticed with this is there's no definition. So you, yes. you need to, a definition of terms in, in, in order to solve any problem. Yes. So if something's not defined clearly, then it doesn't have a criteria to meet. And if it doesn't have a criteria to meet, it can be anything. Like Absolutely. It can, yeah, it could be an apple or an orange. Yes. Um, and it, what we need to do is we need to maybe come up with a solution. What would that look like? What would the specific criteria look like for somebody to actually develop? And then there's, I've heard you talk about it before where you say, uh, simplify the syllabus. Oh yeah, definitely. Because there's a lot of stuff in there, Absolutely. martial arts, that it, it, not only would it not work in a street fight for self-defense, it doesn't help you develop as a person. Absolutely. It, it, one of my things is the first three belts in martial arts, in terms of human body mechanics, the people need to be taught how to not hurt themselves. Because mm -hmm. we've got people damaging their own knees, damaging their hips, mm -hmm. breaking their fingers, poking people's eyes, all yes. sorts of stuff. So there's, there's like a, there is a path in martial arts that's not visible to people who are starting out on the path. Okay. So you, would you say that you need, like, like the YouTube learners, they need a path and they need somebody to follow that knows what the actual thing is? Yeah, the, 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 the problem is that we're just a bunch of Ronins, right? Yeah. Running around. Uh, as we were talking about, it's like a, 
It's like driving on a highway with no lanes, right? Everybody yeah. gets to do what they want to do. There's no stop sign, no green light, red light. Um, that's one of the huge problems now. So and the other issue is imagine um, going to college and thinking because you graduated, you're now allowed to open your own college, Yeah. <laughs> right? This is the martial arts. Guys get black belts and then all of a sudden they feel like now they're qualified to be instructors, right? We're never, we're never uh, no, no training in body mechanics, yeah. um, proper technique, uh, emotional intelligence, leadership, yeah. right? Empathy, all these things that, that make a great leader. It's, 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 you don't have that. You just have guys going, this is the way I learned it. And they probably learned from somebody who lacked those things as well. And yeah. the cycle repeats over and over. Now, I don't know, I don't know if I would say you want the government involved. I don't know, yeah. right? But the way it's running right now is absolutely horrific. And I think that uh, hopefully as parents get more educated, they'll be more selective about what schools they decide to put their children in, right? Or themselves in. Yeah. So uh, I think that we definitely have to have some kind of guideline. Just for run. So if we were putting a guideline together, it say it, you can do a top-down approach, so you can do it from the black belt backwards. We can deconstruct it. Mm -hmm. So we can say, well, what is a black belt? How did they become the belt? Or we can start at the other end, from yeah. the grassroots up, where we say a new person walking into a martial arts school, what should they be looking for? Mm -hmm. So if you, could, if you could identify one thing or, or a, a few things that would be very beneficial for a parent going into a martial arts school that are going to put their child into, or themselves, like you said, what would be some advice that you would have that conversation with them? What, what should they be looking for, would you say? Uh, I think that you have to have that, uh, that combination of good customer service, right? And good quality instruction. Uh, I wouldn't want to put my child in any place where there are more um, symbols than substance, right? I wouldn't want to put, I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in a place that just says, well, if you have two days a week, uh, nobody ever fails. Nobody ever fails a belt test, right? Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't want that. I, I would want to make sure that I'm held accountable, that I know my belt requirements. I want to be in a place where the belt requirements make sense. Am I learning my jabs, my crosses, my front kicks? Uh, or you started me off with flips and tricks and dance routines yeah. and, you know. So I want to make sure that I'm in a place that after a certain amount of time, I should be able to defend myself. Or at least have the basic understanding of defending myself. Um, quality instruction. Uh, I don't want a bunch of semantics just saying, oh, well, you know, every three months, my child would get this new belt automatically just off the rip. I, I think this should be structured, but not just no matter what the child looks like. I think another thing that you should, that you should ask is how long does it take to get a black belt? Yeah. I think that says a lot too, right? In a sense that if you start talking to me about two years and a year and a half, and I'm not saying it has to be 20 years, right? But I, I've seen schools where two years, if you box, if you have any, you know, two years boxing, you're still a beginner. Like yeah. you, you're still in the beginning of learning, right? So I think the length of time that it takes for you to get to a black belt, the method that it takes to get a black belt, uh, what is the criteria to get a black belt? What's the standard? I think a parent should look into all of those things. Also, is the curriculum updated? Are we doing stuff from the Ming Dynasty? Yeah sitting in deep horse stances, grunting foreign languages. I wouldn't want to be in that situation. I want to be in a school that's up to date on new information, that's evolving, that's dealing with striking, um, grappling as well, dealing with different ranges of fighting. I don't want to just sit there with all this theory and philosophy. So I think um, all of those things I definitely would want uh, to be put in place. But the first indicator I would ask is, how long does it take to get a black belt here? That's the first thing that yeah. will help me determine the mindset of the instructor. Is it business or is it martial arts, right? That's that, and I know you have, I know martial arts can be a business, but I don't mind a person making money, they should, but I wanna make sure that the quality of instruction is is the priority in any school that I go to, yeah. or I want my children to go to. Yeah, so say if we took a tournament as an idea, mm -hmm. with a, a beginner level tournament, a novice tournament, what? at what time period should people start competing? So in class, how quickly should somebody spar, start sparring? How should, so what techniques would they need to learn to spar? How long would that take? And then 
do you throw them straight into a competition and and what time frame should that happen in would you say i think i think you always have exceptions to the rules right yeah. but i think that you need to develop them before you even start talking about tournaments first i think that you need to find out their mental fortitude right their temperament uh, their ego uh, one of the things that I do personally in my school is before I even look at a kid for a tournament, I don't care. I do not care about their talent. They could, they could be in a split, kick straight up to the sky. I do not confuse myself or get blinded or overly excited about talent. Yeah. First thing I ask is what kind of parent do they have? Because yeah. the parent ultimately is going to determine the kind of support that I'm going to receive, right? Yeah. The parent is ultimately going to determine what happens when that child... Um, has disappointment, how do they deal with disappointment or how do they deal with success, right? So the first thing is, is I want to get the parent um, acclimated to the culture of my school. Yep. That's first. If that takes a year, that's how long it's going to take you before you compete, right? If it takes two years, that's how long it's going to take you because I need you to know that in this, we're going to win some, we're going to lose some. What's your attitude about it? What's the conversation on the way home that you're going to have with your child? Because the conversation on the way home kills more athletes than disappointment in a tournament. When a parent is, makes it all about the tournament yeah. and not the journey. Yeah. That's the first thing I'm looking at, right? So that's the number one thing that's going to determine that for me. The second thing that's going to determine that is the work ethic of the child and their mental fortitude. I don't even care about the talent, right? We can, we can, we can train ability. I need to know what kind of person you're going to be, deal, with, deal with when it comes to competition. And I'm going to learn that by training with you myself, being hands-on with you, watching how you interact in the school, what happens when you deal with students who may be a little bit better. So I think the nurturing process, um, I think the nurturing process is something that we skip a little too easy. Yeah. Um, and I think that needs to be spent a little bit more time. But if I had to say a time, I, I really honestly, I start introducing sparring in a six-month capacity and that's start, and I'm selective about that. So I would say minimum on, on everything in the right order, six months for yeah. a beginner. But again, there's no spins, there's no extra. I am I'm a guy that believes in solid basics, yeah. right? And, and we developed that then, and we got the temperament and the parental support, sky's the limit. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna out myself on this one. I'm gonna throw this out there. We've not had this discussion. Yes. So, for me, when we say basics, we talk about stance, foot positioning, mm -hmm. bending the legs, guard is the yes. hand positioning. There's several different yes, positions. Yes. The, the position of the chin, the head, the yes, angle of the face. Absolutely. The, the spine not leaning forward. Yes. Back. Then I would say footwork, so shuffles and skips, hopping, pivoting. Yes. People, people nowadays, they don't actually understand how their own feet work. Mm -hmm. they, they push with a flat back foot, things like this. So therefore, they won't have spring. Then I would come across to the strikes and I would say, I, I break the body down into four quarters. So front hand would be snap punch, jab, back fist, ridge hand, hammer fist, hooks, and uppercuts. Yes. We don't use palm strikes yeah, 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 yeah. For, gotcha. for that type of thing. But then front leg would be front kick and round kick as a basic. Gotcha. Side kick. So you, you got two types of people. You've got people that are flexible front to back and some people are flexible side. Yes. So you've got some people can naturally throw a side kick quite easily and some people have to adopt the front kick mm -hmm. more. That is individual to the person. And then off the back leg, we would go back leg, front kick, back leg, round kick. Off the backhand, cross, reverse punch, well with yes. rich hand, hook an uppercut. And these basics need to be drilled. Drill, over and drill. over, yes. The repetitions done correctly builds neural pathways within the brain which need to be programmed through the prefrontal cortex and they need to set into the limbic system well enough that when somebody goes under pressure, the pattern within the brain doesn't break down mm -hmm. and it turns into something yes, to flinch. Yes, it. absolutely. So um, one of my coaches, Edo, he talks about uh, emotional modulation. So we, we throw a lot of drills where at the beginning when you start off is people throwing punches at you very close yes. to make you flinch. Yes, and, yes. and then we start doing some contact. Um, that, that would be what my basics would look like at the beginning. Obviously, you give them the explanations yes, in yes. a short detail, then the fine detail. But they have to learn it experientially. So they have to have the experience yes. of weeks and weeks and weeks of these. Otherwise, 
and I've seen this, even people get to pro level and it's not really, they've won, because, but they've won because they're fit and tough and athletic. Yeah, 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 yes. And then they get under pressure at a high level and they fall to pieces because the brain hasn't developed under huge pressure when yes. they're in their limbic system, the patterns aren't integrated enough. Um, is that is that a similar? Do we have a similar understanding on no, that? No, no. Have got I, anything I'm, to I'm add to I'm it? with you, one thousand uh, percent. Maybe not as fancy. The words are not as fancy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but no. Yeah. But I'm with you one thousand percent. But this is why I said, when you when you start talking about, um, when I said even picking a school is because everything that you just said takes time. Yeah. I don't have the time to develop that and share it with me personally. I'm not knocking anybody else. I don't have the time to develop all those pieces that you just said yeah. and share them with forms, share them with tricking. I don't, I don't have, I don't, cause I know that this thing has so many layers in it. Yeah. I want to get straight to the nitty gritty of it. Right. Yeah. So I want to make sure like, as you just said, the jab, the body, the movement, the, 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 the different angles of kicking, stretching, we got so much work that we have to do. And we have it in such a limited amount of time. Classes nowadays in America could be anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour, right? Yeah. Generally. Now, that's th that's 30 minutes to an hour with 20 people on the floor. So the time that we have is so small. Now imagine me dividing that between self-defense so, yeah. number 19, cotton number 30, this roll, that 10 hip throws, 10. I'm not saying those things aren't important, but you have to define what you want as an instructor yeah. and find a thousand ways to get the athlete to perform the way you want, which takes time. Yeah. So I don't understand how somebody can be that in two years or, you know, especially yeah. at seven years old. And that, those are the signs of quality instruction. So I'm with you 100 percent. I think that that's why drilling, drilling over and over and over and over and over has to be implemented in the martial art program instead of. But but what we have is instead of developing them, we nurture them. We high five them to death. We are we we are glorified self esteem centers. We don't correct them when they're wrong. We don't hold them accountable because we scared that the dollar may run out the door. Yeah. Instead of showing that I care, this is a part of the process. I want you to get better, and this is the culture of this school. They can leave your school or my school and go up the street and become a black belt in this time, and not and none of those skills are required. And this is what makes the martial arts become terrible because there's more of them. Then that's or they're more organized. Yeah, than, yeah. than us, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So something that sprung to mind that you talked about the relationship that the child has with the parent. So the yes. the, the person that is paying for the classes. Yes. Sometimes they're actually the motivator behind bringing the child to the class. Absolutely. The, class, the child doesn't really like it, but the, the parents there, and it, those people are sometimes failed martial artists themselves. Yes. Or they they failed in some form of athleticism or they had issues with with their parents this then filters down like the generational yes. trauma stuff we talked about so you get the parent living vicariously through the child if that child loses at a tournament or doesn't do well in like like if the parent is sitting in a waiting room and they're showing little johnny pay attention johnny pay attention and the yeah. kid's looking this way he's he's All paying the attention to the, the yeah. so we say to the parents please be quiet let the teachers do the teaching absolutely and reap the rewards from it but i've had arguments with parents like actual arguments with parents where i'm saying stop giving your child you, if the, the child needs to uh, not necessarily a young child either needed to weigh in for a specific fight okay. once they reach a certain age and and i say you have to drink water in order to lose weight if you don't drink enough water your body can't metabolize the, the fat and burn it and it comes out through water vapor in your breath a, a, a large portion of it and every time I turn around, the parent is pouring the, the child soda, soda, yeah, snap. We'll see. I got you. Cordial juices, yes. Yeah. And it's just like these are the people that are out there that we're that we're uh, trying to. You're not fighting against them, but they create this push yeah, and yeah, pull yes. when you're trying to develop somebody to what we class as their values. So the the parent comes in and they say, "I want my child to be fit and strong, healthy." I want them to be a well-rounded individual. Structured, right? Yeah. Yes. And it's it's all the buzzwords that yes. are floating yes. around. And the symbols. The, yeah. <laughs> but what's there's a big distance, there's a big gap. Yes. I always talk about gaps between things. So there is where the child is, there is the the position that the parent wants the child to be in. 
and then there's the work and that's why the podcast is called the real work so if i could say to you what do you class as the real work is it the repetitions what does the real work look like in a class i think it depends on the agenda but are you speaking from a competitive standpoint so i try to think of it uh we can develop competitors but it's easier to develop the person's approach to the classes first. So if okay. we just say within a class, okay. if, if, you, if you were to walk in, so like you're going to be in the club yes. later, you're going to see some of my students. Yes. And I would, I would like you to go, okay, this person has come in and they've got themselves ready on time. Their belt's tied okay. properly. They look respectable and yes. they're approaching yes. it a, a certain way. Yes. Um, what, what are the attributes of, of okay, the approach in the real world? So you're talking about the, the that's the culture. The culture. That's yeah. the, okay. that's the yeah. culture of, of, the, of each gym has its own culture, right? Yeah. That, that, and I think that's the important thing that um, for me personally, even for me to train with somebody, their culture has to resonate with me. Their moral yeah. compass has to resonate. It's not just, you know, who I, I'm like, do I like the way you act as a person, as a human, yeah. right? how you interact yeah. with the world? That's, that's a big deal to me as well. Uh, so I think that the culture has to be determined day one. So, for example, in, in, in my uh, school, every week there's a new theme, right? And I don't just say this from a uh, from a uh, symbolic standpoint. Let's say that this is the week of mental toughness. The whole class is based on mental toughness. The, the, the speeches that you're going to hear before class, during class, during class, during class, after class, with the parent is about pushing through adversity. And we may do more push-ups that week, more burpees that week, more yeah. laps that week, more jump ropes that week, more. It's going to be intense because I need you to embrace what it is to yeah. be mentally tough, right? And then the next week may be the week of leadership. What does a leader look like? How does a leader carry himself? How, what's the example of a leader? The next week after that might be the week of socialization. How do we interact with people? How do we make friends, alliances, right? All of these things are to develop you as a person because ultimately this, as you just said earlier, you said... Because humans are messed up, it's not the martial arts, it's the people. the people. So if we could fix the people, then whatever the people are involved in, that will evolve as well. Yeah. So ultimately, it's not, the, it's not the competition because the competition are lessons. We just really want the lessons from competition. So we use it as a tool, right? So ultimately, um, the thing that I say, the mission statement in my school is to create the best version of yourself. When you walk in the door, it says creating the best version of you as soon as you walk in. Yeah. Because I want you to know this is ultimately what we're about right now. So uh, we emphasize on those. We have 12 life skills that we keep emphasizing on um, and core values. And everything is about developing the person to be it's he or she's best version of themselves. Right. And I think that's if you skip over that just for competition, all you're making is athletes. Yeah. Right. And then when they're done with competition, they're done with the martial arts. Yeah. But if we make martial artists. Whether they compete or whether they don't compete, they stay longer. They may be lifelong martial artists. They're not just people who just said, oh, well, you know, I won the, the WACO, NASCAR, WKC Worlds, and then I'm done. They're still in the gym developing and as people. And I think that's the important thing. So um, I, I am a, uh, my school is, is a martial arts school, but it is, the goal is to develop people. Yeah. That's the agenda. And we use tournaments that help teach the lessons of that. Right. Those are, that's one part yeah. of it. It's, it. So the tournaments come in as a, a place where you can expose the cracks and the yes, strengths absolutely. in the a character. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. You have to, it's a pressure absolutely. test and then you go back to the drawing absolutely. room. Absolutely. So the next question that I would go through, we, we understand that basics are important. We understand that people are flawed. One of the words you said a second ago was fix. The, the fix is a really important word. So when you say the word fix to people, a lot of people straight away, and if we have people watching this, they will literally go, I don't need fixing, oh. straight away. And then there's a, there's a famous uh, psychotherapist called Elaine de Botton, and I think he's written like 100 books, and he's got a book called The Therapeutic Journey. And he says, like, why do we think that we, as we are, that we are lovable, our behaviors are, are when we're on our bad days and we're being horrible to people yeah, yes. and we're, we're honking our horn that, where someone's pulled out and they've just made a mistake. They didn't see the other car and we're honking at them and calling them all sorts of names. We're, human beings have this kind of inner 
anger that they need to get out some ways. And if, if you develop yourself through the martial arts, if you fix yourself, depending how you want to say it, if you develop past that, you, you come across like a, an opening within yourself where you go, okay, I don't feel like I did before. So you can be sparring someone and they hit you a bit hard and you go, okay, well, I'm just going to allow that one and we're going to move on. And you, you don't react the same way that you would have as a beginner. There's no tension. Yes, yes, yes. And so the three things that we kind of keyed for people to keep an eye on. So what I try to address with my students is tension within the body. So physical tension. If we've got excess physical tension, then it's a sign that we're holding on to it somewhere. Um, you, obviously, you, we, we make sure we have muscular tension because mm -hmm. we do the push-ups mm -hmm. and sit-ups, but you shouldn't be physically tense all the time. <laughs> yes. The, the physical tension comes along with a side effect, which is ruminating negative thoughts. So, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm yes, never yes, going to get yes, this right. Yes. I'm at the tour. Like, I've literally been at tournaments before, and I've been warming up in the corner, and the other people in the category have left, and they've gone home. And then I'm stood there going, what did I do? And it's because they're watching the warm-ups, and they've got inside their own head. Yeah, you, you have it with believe, people. Yes. You get the people at the tournaments that they walk around looking at everyone else thinking that's the, he's the same weight as me. She's the same weight as me. They're the same height. I'm going to have to fight them later. And it goes, these negative cyclical thought patterns happen. And then from that, they end up with expression of negative emotions. And it could be outwardly to other people or themselves. Would you say that the process of martial arts can help people tackle those things? Because it's, it gives them an environment that is, like we always say, it's a safe, fun environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, like, it's coined on all of the, the flyers that you throw yes. out. Yes. Build self-confidence, yes. build self-discipline, yes. a fun, safe environment. Yes. It's, like, it's safe because it's all padded. We're going to kick the crap out of each other some days. Yeah, yes. But what's it for? And it's, it's to bring these things out. And in order to not, what people do, so say like if you, if you poke someone and they don't like it, they, they recede, they isolate, and they won't go back into that environment, yes. which is like what we said about the toilets. So in order to bring these things out of people and build resilience, we have to put ourselves in uncomfortable situations. Yes. And so can you give us some of your own experiences of uncomfortable situations that you've been in through your practice, through, through training? Oh, so, so, so many. Um, wow. Um, so I remember competing um, in the black, belt, the black belt division and losing. I remember... Uh, just losing, just just not winning at all. And uh, I remember, I remember going to tournaments and looking at this guy and that guy, and automatically giving them five points in my head. Yeah. And I'm just like, he's so he's so good. Uh, I would always speak of them from the best of them. He's so good. Oh, he's fast. Yeah. He's this is so and so. He's he has a name, and I never saw any of the greatness in me. Right. I just yeah. always projected and added to them and it creates a bigger monster in your head and I remember sparring in tournaments and I couldn't hear my coaches the room seemed like it was going so fast my mouth got dry I'm 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 in the limbic right now I'm just you know and I'm just throwing stuff yeah. you right next to me I'm trying to throw a spinning hook cake at you yeah. you know and um I remember in, in particular um Jesse Ray and, and, and my instructor um Master Sabu would always be like, you're going to be good one day, man. You, you just got to keep, you just got to keep believing. And they always saw it in me before I saw it in me. And I just think that um, that was one example that one day, you know, dissatisfaction brings about change. I was just tired of losing. I was tired of, of being a guy that walked in tournaments and nobody knew my name. They would just go, that's Jesse friend, you know? Yeah. And I was like, you know, Jesse, I'm your friend, but I'm Jotty. I got my, I want my yeah. own, my own light, my own shine. Um, that was one, that was one stage in my life. And then meeting different competitors who gave me a hard time where I had to figure that out. That was another stage in my life. And then opening a business, that was another uncomfortable stage in my life, right? Where I, I, I opened my business um, and I didn't want to. My mother took out uh, $15,000 and, and, and gave me, and she said, you're going to open the school up. And I had no idea how to run the school. That was another. That was another stage. In my, becoming a father, that was another stage in my life. Right, um, getting married and getting divorced, and then going to therapy. Right, um, 
not therapy because the relationship ended, but <laughs> you know, one day I was um, I was I was you know I'm I'm, I'm trained. I'm going to business seminars. I'm 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 doing things. And I'm like I'm doing all these things for my business, uh, for my martial arts, but I didn't do anything for myself internally. Yeah. Right. So I'm like you know. Maybe I need to do that and see, you know, let me see what that's good. Yeah, right. Let me see what that's about. And unfortunately, amongst men, our egos get involved where we think that, you know, we don't need any help. We don't need any other voice to tell us nothing. We can fix everything. And I keep, even I tell my friends to this day, no doctor is allowed to do his own surgery. Yeah. Right. Therapists yeah. have therapists. Yeah. You don't see a surgeon going there and go, I'm doing open heart surgery on myself. Right. It, it doesn't happen. Like we all need somebody because we judge ourselves from the best of us and, ju and judge everybody from the worst of them. Yeah. And what, why you have a coach? Because a coach see, you, see what you don't see. You think you're seeing, but you're not seeing, right? So I think that um, those, me having that mindset allowed me to be able to become a better, a better leader for my, uh, uh, being a self-aware leader where I could see the flaws in myself or question them, yeah. which made me do jujitsu. Because I, I knew I didn't know what to do on the floor, which made me box because I knew that just doing karate alone to me wasn't a, just enough. I knew there was holes yeah. in it. And I always had the mindset of it's not enough. You got to keep growing. You got you got to fix this. You got always, always a student first. And I think that mentality um, allowed me to continue to when I ran into those uncomfortable situations, allow me to adjust all the time or constantly involving, man. You never stop. The caterpillar becomes the butterfly. You never stop. You keep growing. And I think that, um, not to be long-winded, but I think that one of the problems with martial art instructors is they think they're always supposed to be the instructor. Yeah. They're never supposed to be the student. They're always supposed to be the instructor, which is absolutely crazy. Yeah. You know, it stops your development. Yeah. It's something that I have with my students is if they have a question... And I, the, the one question I want in my classes all the time is why? Yeah, yes, yes, like, yes, yes. The kids say it, little kids, why, why, why? They get yes, to a certain yes. age and they stop. And I'm, I want the adults to ask me why. Why do you turn your foot there? Why is your yes. foot in that position? Why is the elbow tucked in? The, the other thing that it, it made me think of just a second ago is you said that, so we kind of, we want to see ourselves from the best in us. And we, when we judge other people, we do it for the worst in them. Yes. And then when we go to the tournament, so the, the, the thing that flips when, I always call it like a paradox or a, or a mirror effect, where if you get this in a high pressure situation, then what happens is it flips. So you see the worst in yourself and the best in the other person. And in actual fact, the, the balance happens somewhere in the middle. So I've seen the best fighters lose because they had a bad day and then you get the the person that beat them thinks they're the number one oh yeah absolutely that's, that's what the ego allows yeah, you yeah they yes. come back and then it's not the yeah same yes the absolutely because uh, you never know what like someone could be having some issues at home yes, they might yes. not slept they the backstory yeah, right there's yeah. always a an origin story yes, isn't there for these yes people. absolutely so, in terms of it, if we said well martial arts can provide people with physical mental and emotional journeys it's up to them to travel those journeys. And I try to t explain to people that these journeys happen outwardly. So you can journey physically outwardly by doing some bench press, go on a run, anything yes. you like. Mentally, there is an external journey because you've got to navigate bumping into different people, different personalities, organization, packing your bag, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. making sure your uniform's done yes. correctly. Emotionally, outwardly you have to deal with how do these people make me feel how does this situation yes, make me feel? Yes. but also these things happen internally the, the internal physical side of it is people they, there's two scales so there's people who can sit still and actually be at peace and i don't mean like not having a war i mean physically relaxed peace when i say peace i mean yes, relaxed. Yes, i don't yes, want yes. to sound like a, a yoga guy sitting on the side <laughs> of a mountain staring into space but so the, these journeys, physical, mental, and emotional, outwards and inwards, can be learned and they can develop. And I don't think they can stop developing. I think for our entire lives, we can carry on learning, developing, understanding yes. ourselves better. And all those things can be done through martial arts. So that's, that's the path that we're looking to travel down. The problem that I've seen is when you get a student that 
maybe one in a hundred students come in and they just get it straight away. They're like, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do these things. I'm going to get the kids. I'm going to get the punches. So then you go, okay, you are great. We're going to work with you because you're giving back the energy that I give you. And then it helps you as an mm -hmm. instructor. So then you take them to a tournament and you put them in and the tournament organizers are taking their money and not providing the proper service that they said they were providing. Like the, the, the tournament circuit is corrupt. The martial arts industry is ambiguous with its boundaries and its limitations and what it does and doesn't offer. So in terms of the tournaments and the people running the tournaments, if martial arts is for developing ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally and becoming a well-rounded character, why are there so many people out there that aren't delivering it? Because, they, because it's all symbols. It's not substance, right? Yeah. Be because these guys are smart. See, this is the thing, right? The, the, the really good martial artists do it from the, from the love first, right? Which sometimes bites us in the butt. We, yeah. we do it from the love, the love of it first. And then we, we make money from it because we know to maintain it, we have to take care of ourselves. And, and, and I think sometimes we, we have to be okay with being successful, right? We have to be okay with, with being able to have martial arts fund our whole lives and our dreams and be able to provide for our families. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But the, the other side of the guys that use all symbols, they are structured. They, are, they know how to give you a high five, promote you when you're not ready, tell you all, this, all the things that sound good, all the triggers. Oh, Luda Johnny, you're wonderful. You rock. Character, discipline, uh, a focus, indomitable spirit, positive effect. All these things are written on the wall. These are from the most narcissistic, sensitive, egotistical men who should have never been in charge. Most of them are people who have never done anything. Yeah. But they got their black belt from somebody, figured out all the trigger words, opened up the school, got it structured, went to these, these uh, um, conventions and seminars, knew how to make the school look nice, knew how to make the restaurant look nice, knew how to have the yep. waitress, the lighting, the parking, and they brought you into this, and most people who don't know better fall for the madness. It's absolutely terrible. Most of them wouldn't join their own schools. Yep. But th this is the yeah, problem. The, the, the problem is the people who are in charge, the leadership who is in charge of the martial artists or are the ones who play these, these semantics games because it does make a dollar. Again, I'm not saying everyone who makes a dollar. What I'm just saying is most of these guys, I'll be honest with you, I would think like, honestly, seven out of seven, eight out of 10 schools, I would never join. Yeah. Anytime my, my sister or a friend of mine who does not live near me ask me, hey, Jody, could you recommend me a school? I 90% of the time send them to a BJJ school or some kind of Thai school because I do not trust the average Taekwondo karate go to Shorter yeah. Khan guys because I know the nonsense that's going yeah, on. It's out there, yeah. But in me and you talk, if you notice I said Thai, boxing, uh, BJJ, the reason I may send them there is because those arts are not based on you know, let me give you the shiny things. Those arts are based on, don't tell me, show me. Sure, yeah. Show me the skill set for you to progress. Karate guys, that give you all the theory in the world. This is ten kata's. the bunkai means, all the stuff that's in the air. Not, you don't have to be challenged on nothing, right? So um, it's that leadership, man, that everything that you, everything that you spoke about, uh, developing internally, uh, developing physically, paying attention to where your foot should be, your hand, that's a leader. You said somebody who makes you feel good. That's a leader. Those are people who, are, who have an idea of emotional intelligence. These are leaders. We need more good leaders and not car salesmen with belts on pretending to be leaders yeah. who just want the buck. Yeah. Right? And then, so when this comes through to like tournaments, um, uh, one of the experiences we had last year was uh, we took a bit of time off tournaments because we were organizing things. Mm -hmm. we, we, we trained the team. We took them back. And one on the entry forms it got written in the name was read out wrong and then we worked it out problem solved so so the the girl got got the fight but they were calling her a completely wrong name but okay. we because of the gym they came and found us that's fine not a problem we didn't didn't fuss about it well an hour later i i've looked at one of my fighters 
and he was meant to be fighting in a category, but he hadn't gone over. And I said to him, that's your category. So we went over and the tournament organizer was sat in the corner uh, judging. And I said, I said to, to one of the table officials, I, I, how many is left in this category? And they said, oh, there's only one fight left. And I said, well, my fighter needs to get put in. And they said, well, we called him 10 times. And I said, what's his name? And they read the name out wrong again. And I said, well, you've, you've got the name wrong. He's, I'm not going to say the name because yeah, 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 yes. it's uh, the kids. But they read the name wrong. And I said, so just put him in like you did earlier with our other girl. So you've got two names wrong now. And the tournament organizer said, stop causing trouble. You, it, it's ridiculous. You're just causing trouble. We can't put him back in. A good friend of mine, Dave Ryan, was there. And he said, well, what we'll do is we'll put him in at the end against one of the people who's already lost the fight. So he gets tagged on the end. And if he wins, then he fights one of the people okay, that's won. I, okay. Solved the problem. So I was like, cool, that's fine. We waited to the end and the tournament organizer didn't do it. He said he was going to do it, he didn't do it. So then I went over to talk to him and I, I, he was judging and I interrupted him. I said, this needs to be addressed. I said, because if the category finishes completely, you we are, can't, we can't, we yes. can't go back. Yes. And he knew full well that what he was doing, he was trying to get it. He was trying to basically say, don't mention it. Don't talk about it. Avoid it. Stick my head in the sand and carry on. So we got into a bit of a to and fro. And he then turned around to me and said, I don't care. As far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, you don't even exist. And he said this to my face. So I was like, okay, that's fine. You be as rude as you want. Not an issue. We'll sort this out afterwards. So the category finished. Dave, Dave Ryan managed to get another fight for my guy anyway. So they put the, he got a fight anyway. Okay. Cool. Uh, thanks to Shane Blackburn that day, actually, because it was his fighter that jumped in for us. So Shout out to Shane. Yeah, Shout out to big Shane. Big Shane. <laughs> He's cool. Um, and then, so we, we sorted it all out. I went up to address the tournament organizer, and he basically, we shook hands afterwards. We, we talked about it. And just as I was walking off, he made another comment. He couldn't just let it go. And I was like, okay, so now I'm going to address this. And I walked over and I said, look, you were rude to me. You told me I didn't even exist. And for the last hour of your tournament, I had to judge for you. I had to central referee the continuous because he didn't have any judges. And he was just like, put his head down. And then I got home later that day and the same tournament organizer sent me a Facebook request, a friend request, which I've still got sat on my phone now, which I, I'm going to clip this in. His name is Humphrey Brooms. He told me to my own face, I don't even exist. And then I had to help him finish his own tournament for him on the day. So I'm going to delete that friend request and I don't care what Humphrey said. <laughs> it, like the, this is the, the issue with the, I call them like the gatekeepers. So they're, yeah, gotcha. they're, yeah, they're, yes. they're a slightly older generation that they, they, some of them are amazing. Some of these guys, the ethics, the morals, the lessons, but some of them that weren't quite making it have gone astray. So, so I would say we, we can achieve a black belt rank with our punches and kicks, and we can achieve some type of character development with morals and ethics, yes. but we can always slip backwards if we stop doing the real work. Yes. And you, we talked about this yesterday, you said about martial arts instructors saying they've been training for 30 years, but the last 15 years they've been stood at the edge of the mat talking. Yes. And they got the belly and they, they can't even defend themselves from McDonald's. Yes. Really. So, what would be the solution? Would it be that we've got to lead from the front and start something or a tournament that's fair and honest and we deliver? Because if you get these, if you get a good parent and you get a good student come in and they do exactly what you say and you want to take them to a tournament and say, this is, this is the path you're going to go down. And then you take, they've done a year, two years work, take them to the tournament, they get ripped off. They get a medal, which is absolute, it's like plastic mm -hmm. but with a sticker on the front. Yes. Like the trophies back in the day when all these guys gotcha. were running in the toilets were six, six foot feet. tall. Yeah, yep. And remember. they've got them, they've got their photos with yeah, them. Yes. And now they're giving out medals yes. this big. They're, and their prices haven't changed. Yes, so, they went up actually. Yeah, they've gone up. Yeah. So, so how do we solve this? What, what is the route that we can go down? Um, the, this, this needs to change, doesn't it? Because you're going to lose the people that come in and yes. do the hard work because if the benefit doesn't match it, the reward needs to be as yes. great as the effort, doesn't it? Well, one, one of the things that promoters have to realize is that when they ask you and me to bring students to their tournament, what they're asking for is money. Yeah. Right? They, they, they may say yeah. students, but they're saying, bring me some money. Yeah. Right? This is, this, is what, this is what they're asking for. 
Um, and the one thing that karate has, martial art tournaments, one of the reasons that it hasn't grown is because the customer service hasn't grown. You, you can have a, a, a huge venue in the nastiest bathroom. Yeah. Nobody comes to clean the bathroom between the tournaments. Like th these are just things of good customer service, right? Yeah. And I tell people, if I like you, I'll listen to you. If I trust you, I'll spend money with you. See, there's a, there's a difference between like and trust. Yeah. Trust means you keep your promises that you told me. Yeah. Right. Like like gets me initially into what you're saying. Trust shows me that you keep your word and I want to support that. I want to yeah. I'm loyal to that. Right. So they'll have three, four, five hundred competitors, a thousand competitors. There's never a bathroom. There's never a person that cleans the bathroom. Yeah. There's never a person that makes sure that the, that if this ring generally, if this ring is running smooth and we got competitors over here that's sitting there and we could run that ring, run that ring. Yeah. We, 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 we tell them we're going to start at nine and then they want to stop at 10 to give a million awards and, and, and Grandmaster Poobah floating in the clouds just walked in, let's stop there. P parents got things to do. People have things to do. The other thing, the, the thing that they don't realize is that when they give a bad tournament, this, our students don't come to them, they come to us because our students trusted us to leave their homes on the weekend, get gas, hotel, fly little Mikey, or little Johnny, or little Samantha to the tournament, and then they leave your school. Yeah. A clean school, a school with customer service to come to some raggedy event where the, the level of your customer service is here in your school and the level of the tournament it's is here. It doesn't that. match. Yeah. And then for them to almost ask the same amount of money that you may ask for for one month of tuition, they're asking for that in one day and they let our students down and then we look crazy. Yeah. Then we got to put out those fires, yeah. right? So the one thing that's, that's going to make them change is, I always tell people this, if you don't spend money with me, I don't spend money with you. I go, yeah. I go where I'm celebrated, not tolerated, don't right? If, if these guys don't want to do what they're supposed to do, we can't be so committed to a league that we ignore all the red flags in the name of the, 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 the medal yeah. or the trophy. Like I ask you all the time, then why do you, why do you go there? If you know they're treating you a certain way. Listen, no disrespect. I'm not trying to kick no doors down. But even, even the whole Waco thing, with, with, and listen, I'll say it. Where they prevent people from going to tournaments, other leagues, and this yeah. politics that they play, man, is absolutely, why do people tolerate this? I have no, these are grown men. Yeah who are supposed to be leaders that tolerate the politics yeah. is crazy. It, it can never be me. But, yeah. you know, I, I just so I think that you got to hit them where it hurts. You know, I, I, don't, I don't support you because you don't got to change. It's just like sparring. You don't got to move. I'll move. If yeah. you don't want to, if you want to stay there, I'll cut the angle. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I don't need you to do either. I can move or you can move. Right. OK. You don't want to do it outside. Step you and I'll go over here. So, you know, I just think it comes to the point where they're not gods. Um, and I think also, if you make your school a martial arts school who happens to do tournaments, that's different than a tournament school. See, a tournament school needs yeah. to go to a tournament, right? Yeah. I don't need to go to a tournament. Yeah. I don't have to take anybody to a tournament and I'll be okay, yeah. right? So the tournament is a tool that I use, but I think that we have to make our school martial arts schools and understand that the promoters are working for our dollars and not the other not way the around, other, yeah. you know? I think that's yeah. huge. Yeah, I think what you said about they're basically enabling it. So the people that go to the tournaments repetitively, mm -hmm. they get mistreated, mm -hmm. they don't say anything, and they go back and then they run around uh, trying to impress the tournament organizer. They're just enabling, of course, the manipulation and the, of the bad behavior to carry on happening. So I always, I never ever come up with an issue. I don't identify a problem and openly talk about it until I've come up with a workable solution. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll discuss the problem in order to come up with a solution. But, so we, we're starting off a tournament, which is going to be a round robin tournament, where each category lasts about 25 minutes. Okay. If it doesn't finish on time, if there's a draw, then it gets put onto a separate mat and the draw is finished whilst the next category starts. So I've, I've spent years now driving to Manchester or Liverpool or Birmingham and you're sat in a sports hall all day. We went, we went to Germany for the World Championships 2019. I was, I was meant to fight on Friday night and I didn't fight till Sunday night. Um, so it's like, you can't afford to waste your time sitting. Like I would rather do three days training than go to the World Championships for maybe four or five fights for the, for the world yeah, title. Yes. I'd rather do the training for the weekend. Yes. And, rent like a, a yes, posh hotel and do the because it's more it's fun it's more beneficial yeah. yes so 
so what we're doing, we're going to put this tournament on and we're going to inv it's invite only. So we're, we're going to hold some big squad training sessions, okay. build up uh, maybe five or 10 schools that we believe are prestige, high quality martial arts schools. We're going to try to work together and we're going to do an invite only tournament where you're guaranteed three fights in a category and each fight for the kids, it's uh, one round and for the adults, it's two rounds per okay. fight. So the adults will get six rounds and it would, it would work gotcha. through. That's my solution to it because I'm sick and tired of these manipulative people taking all the time, not giving back because they, I don't, it's not about me. They're, they are directly affecting the martial arts. Absolutely. They're, they're bastardizing it. Yes. And I'm not about to stand and watch that happen anymore. Um, with, with your vision that you see for martial arts in the next five years, where would you like to see martial arts in America and England? Where would you like to see it go in the direction? Say quality like, martial fun, arts. Quality well, martial I, would, arts I would like to see quality martial arts. I would like to see um, quality instructors. I would like to see, um, I say karate, but I would like to see karate get some respect uh, in the sense of being more relevant. Um, I think it's slowly changing in the sense that um, we're not using all outdated methods in today's game. Fighters are better than they have ever been, more athletic, quicker, stronger. Um, and I'm hoping that instructors would catch on to also update their curriculum, uh, update this experience that, they, that their students are having in their school, um, raise the bar because, you know, we have found ways to keep making 80,000 a month, 100,000 a month. I, I know guys that make 90,000 a month, 120,000 a month in one school. We have found ways to, whether it be the way you answer the phone, the way that the school looks, we have found ways to keep making the experience better and better and better. But the food still sucks in the restaurant, right? That's the, like, you, you, you found a way to make $100,000 a month. You can't make 50, 10 years not punch like this and put their hands up and they chin down and turn their hips like, we haven't invested in that part of it. And that's the part that takes the work. Yeah. That's the part that you gotta, you gotta get in the foxhole with them and, and explain the why. Yeah. But many of them don't know the why. Because yeah. once they got their black belt, you know, they felt like that's all they needed to do. And now they sit on the mat. We call them M&Ms, mat masters, right? Yeah. They, they just sit there on the mat and yelling out instructors, instruction, and they don't even train no do it more. Themselves, yeah. Right? So it, it, it's crazy, man. It, it is. Uh, I, I'm hoping in the next five years that the level of instruction to get better, the the the, the quality of instruction to get better, and the leadership would get better. And, and instructors who do well will make a who who will become more educated in their business system. The good instructors that we can get more structured, we can become uh, more organized so that we can make money as well develop our students as well, and be able to look these guys eye to eye and go, yeah, you got 500, I got 500. Yeah. And they don't look nothing like yours. But yeah. as long as we the broke guys, they can keep saying in their Ferraris, ha ha, yeah, I got a bunch of crappy students, but uh, I'm making all the money, right? So I think that that, that tide has to change. That dynamic yeah. should shift. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping that the next five years bring. And I think with MMA, boxing, kickboxing, being around more, it, it forces it's now, forces guys. That that have to step their game up. That's cool. I'd like to thank you for your time today. Always, your man. Attention, Always, man. Your knowledge. And Appreciate it. just for being yourself. You're, thank you're, you. You're representing who you are. And more importantly, you're representing the truth in a church. In the church. We're blessing y'all right now. <laughs> with, with some knowledge bombs and truth bombs. So thanks very much. And Always. We're going to get down to do some real work for the yes, seminar sir. shortly. Yes, sir. Yes, and, sir. Yes, uh, sir. We can maybe discuss a bit more after. Yes, sir. Definitely. Nice Appreciate you, thank man. You very much. Thank you. Thank cool. you. So it's been about a week since I sat down with Jardy and did the interview. We then went into the seminar after. So it's a Jardy Tension Experience seminar. Absolutely brilliant. The level of tuition, the instruction, the definitions he put on things where he wanted you to put your foot, the placement of the hand, the correct technical emphasis. He gave you an outline, then he gave you the details, and then he gave you the experience where you can put the technique into play experientially. Once you've drilled it enough times, you can finish off with some sparring where you should have tried to implement the techniques learned in the seminar, not go back to your five favorite moves that you do all the time and miss someone and then try to spin and hook kick afterwards. Ridiculous. So what we then talked about was symbols versus substance. And I do this about reflective practice. 
So what I like to do is every time I've met someone new or I've got to have a conversation, I like to sit down and take stock, which is a reflection on the things that we've talked about, the messages, the substance within the actual conversations. So we've got these symbols versus substance. Symbols are representations and they stand for something. So a black belt stands for the attributes of a black belt, the characteristics which need to be evident within the person. If they cannot display it, if they can't do the real work and show you it, they can tell you it, but they can't show you it, then they're going for symbols, not substance. So it could be belts, it could be uniforms, it could be certificates, it could be the photograph at the end of every single class where everyone gets their students lined up and they put a new photo up to attract new people. This is like a pyramid scheme or a cult scheme to try to get people into something and indoctrinate them into a way of thinking that doesn't develop them. So that's really important to keep in mind. Substance is the opposite. Substance is the subject matter itself, the essence, the essential parts of something, the quality of being valid or significant. So the person develops physically, mentally, and emotionally. It brings about change in a positive, guided fashion. It doesn't manipulate them. What it does is it actually allows that person eventually to be able to go off and do it themselves and replicate it without any extra input, which is really, really important. So we have the symbols versus the substance. We then go into semantics. So it could be a parent saying to the to the instructor oh how did little johnny do today and the instructor says it was great he gave the details and the defensive strategies the nature the qualities the attribute and the characteristics of a black belt and johnny's going to be amazing and the parent stands there beaming because what's just happened is they've got instant gratification and a hit of dopamine from the instructor and the parents being manipulated because if you ask little johnny he was picking his nose he wasn't concentrating he wiped it on the wall and he can't even tie his own belt the parents are turning up late to pick them, to drop them off and pick them up, and they don't really care as long as they all feel great. So little Johnny gets a high five and a pat on the back, which is another symbol, and he gets sent out the door and he comes back for the next class, all pumped up, ready to go. But if he was attacked at school, he would not be able to defend himself. He couldn't punch his way out of a wet paper bag, as we say. So these are the things we need to watch out for. The semantics, we need to go with context, detail, and definition, we need to understand the substance behind the facade, behind the veil. And it needs to be lifted and people need to be educated on these topics. So then it brings us on to cults versus culture. So a cult is when veneration or devotion is directed towards a particular figure or object. In this case, it's symbols. So we have the cult of symbolism. It's everybody wants the Facebook pictures. They wanna meet the celebrity. They wanna follow in the footsteps and relive the parents' expe failed experience. So the kids are being pushed when in actual fact we need to pay more attention to the kids and what they need specifically to develop themselves. If we talk about culture, we say it's the ideas and the customs, the social behavior of a particular person or society. So what would the culture look like of a black belt? It would be being kind, but having boundaries, understanding what you're doing, approaching it in the right way, turning up on time with the correct equipment, keeping an eye out at the tournament to make sure that someone else isn't upset. The black belts are the leaders in the, in the environment, the people that are showing the way, they're showing where the path heads to. They're not the people that are manipulating people and taking their money at the tournaments and not delivering a proper service. So if, this, if you see this at the tournaments, it means that the, those black belts have gone the wrong way. We talked about WACO, World Association of Kickboxing Organizations. So it's an association made up of separate organizations. However, if you're a member of WACO, a few people have been told that they're not allowed to fight at other tournaments, but how are they gonna stay sharp? If you're a World Organization of Kickboxing, uh, World Association of Kickboxing Organizations, and you're made up of those organizations, surely your fighters should be able to fight in the other organizations. So this is a question that needs to come up. I was actually at a tournament as well recently, and we found a WACO committee member entering somebody who'd either fought at the World Championships or the European Championships and got a gold medal, entering a novice category at a local tournament, which was interesting. However, the WACO member, once it was pointed out, stood there, had a full conversation about it, 
questioned whether it was moral or ethical, explained his reasoning for why it had happened, and he showed some amazing character. So thank you very much for that. So there's, there's some good people out there, which again, we say these gatekeepers, there's these good people out there that are doing it the right way and they're trying to promote the right things and they're allowed to question. And then you've got the other ones which are just letting the, t the side down, that they're, they're, they're bastardizing the martial arts. The way they do it is they keep the culture ambiguous. So ambiguity is it's open to more than one interpretation. So it's not having one obvious meaning, which is the opposite to context. So context being the information immediately preceding a word or phrase which clarifies its meaning. So ambiguity is the opposite. Open to more than one interpretation, not having one obvious meaning. And if we do that, it means we can keep the boundaries blurred. So when somebody questions it, we can hit them with semantics and we cannot define it with any clarity. This is the manipulation side. So it would be to handle or control in order to alter or change and influence in an unscrupulous matter or manner, sorry. So people are using ambiguity and cultism for symbolism to manipulate the martial arts industry and it's narcissism. That's what we talked about, Jardy said it himself. So what we're trying to do really is we need to get it back towards the substance and we need to guide people. So to guide would be to show or indicate the way for someone or direct or influence their behavior or themselves to the direction of development of a person. So to guide someone, to show or indicate the way to somebody, to direct or influence them or their behavior to the direction of development for themselves. So they actually get given the tools to spot it themselves. They learn how to pay attention, focus, concentrate, and use self-discipline. This is really important an instructor can say these things, attention, focus, concentration, self-discipline, not many can explain it. This is how I talk about it in my classes. Attention is all of the information going on around you in your environment at any one time. If you pay attention, it's also to do with the texture. You can feel it through your skin. You can hear the instruction. You need to understand it, you need to comprehend it. So listening is not paying attention, comprehension is. It's the transmutation of information into action. And that is the substance of a black belt. It allows them to actually reciprocate the ideas and perform them themselves. Focus is the pieces of information that they're able to stay fixed on as a target. So can you keep your attention on your foot for a certain amount of time? Is your attention on your foot? That's the focus. Is your attention on your wrist? That's the focus. It's picking a target for your attention to be fixed on. Concentration is the amount of time you can do it for. So little kids' classes need to be 30 minutes because that's all they can manage. They get exhausted when they actually truly pay attention. Then we have the bigger kids and the, the time period gets longer. Most people can't pay attention and concentrate for more than a minute and a half at a time anyway, which is really important. Then we've got self-discipline. Self-discipline is understanding when you've been distracted, being able to identify it. This is a whole practice, but it's all part of this reflective practice that we're talking about during this last 10 minutes of the video. So we've got symbols versus substance. We've got semantics being used to keep ambiguity in place so they can have a cult instead of a culture. And we need to move away from the manipulation where they're controlling situations with ambiguity. And we need to move towards guidance to show and indicate the way to someone to direct or influence them and their behavior to their own development. So put your attention, focus, concentration, and self-discipline on your own development. And then we're gonna end up with more leaders and less manipulators. Thank you very much for watching. And I'd like to say a massive thank you again for Jar Detention because he's given us some clarity and he's given us one step closer to maybe fixing some of the problems within the martial arts industry and with our own morals and ethics. Thank you very much.